I ran across a few files last week quite accidentally, and of course I got completely derailed. And so we are revisiting the journey of the traveling audio reel in relation to the new documentation I was able to locate last week. In May of 1964, Ken Moore of KBOX states that John R. Box, president of KBOX, confirmed that the original tapes were sent to UPI New York in December of 1963. And to the best of Mr. Box's knowledge, they were still in the possession of UPI. In March of 1964, a teletype from FBI agent Gimberling in Dallas sends word to the FBI director about the existence of Colpix records four days that shocked the world. On May 28, 1964, UPI New York denies having the original tapes to the FBI. The same day, an attorney for Colpix records denies having the tapes and suggests asking UPI. On the 29th of May, 1964, a field office agent, Rosen, sends a teletype to the director. It states, UPI informs the FBI that they only received copies of the reels from the radio stations and suggests the FBI go to the radio stations to collect the originals, as FCC requires all stations to keep the audio reels for three years. And yet KBOX still denies having the originals. On the 2nd of June, 1964, a New York field office sends the following to the director of the FBI. One reel of original sound from KBOX. A statement from Colpix Records that the original tapes are in the custody of Olmsted Sound Studios in New York. And another communication to the director from the New York office of the FBI dated the 2nd of June. A statement from Bruno Vaness, engineer of Olmsted Sound Studios, presenting the original audio from KBOX. In the notes, he mentions there were 15 cuts on the original audio, and they are unaltered. Bruno also requests the reels be returned to him upon completion of the investigation. Side note, as you can see, this document is stamped, Copies Were Destroyed, January 3rd, 1973. On the 10th of June, 1964, J. Edgar Hoover sends a letter to James Lee Rankin, General Counsel to the Warren Commission. He notes, that he is including the original audio reel from KBOX that he obtained from Olmsted Sound Studios. He also notes that he has an interview by a field agent with Sam allegedly first to report the shooting. He goes on to describe the reel, quarter inch magnetic recording on a seven inch Eastman Kodak Company plastic reel labeled in red wax pencil, KBOX, six cuts. He continues with the statement that no gunshots were detected on the audio. He concludes that a comparison indicated the KBOX original reel has more of Sam's broadcast than is on the Colpix album and does not indicate any alterations. The reels would remain in the vaults of the Warren Commission until the case was reopened in 1976 by the House Select Committee on Assassinations. They would begin testing the audio, once again, for any acoustical evidence present on the tapes. The note in the FBI file stating that the copies were destroyed on January 3rd, 1973 is a little troubling. Copies of what exactly and why? Did they only keep the original? So what exactly does the House Select Committee on Assassinations end up testing? The recreation with the 15 cuts that were originally submitted to the UPI? A copy of Colpix records? Or the six cuts Hoover describes? As with every deep dive into the archives I've ever done, I never really find any answers, just more questions. Sam would not be contacted again until January of 1970. We will review this interview next time. I'm still not certain who Al Chapman was, but his interview with Sam would not be transcribed until 1977 during the House Select Committee on Assassinations Investigations. So who was investigating the assassination in 1970? Why?